Hello, welcome to the Shapely Tote uh, tutorial. Uh, it's a pattern by Spencer Ogg and Diane has very kindly um, asked me if I would be happy to make this tutorial and I jumped at the chance. I love making Diane's patterns. Um, they are so clear and easy to understand and they never seem to have any really awkward areas for sewing. So they're a real pleasure to make. I have tweaked the pattern a little bit. The structure of the bag, the actual pattern of the bag, I haven't changed at all. I wouldn't dream of it. Um, it's perfect as it is. And um, I did do vinyl down the sides and in the top band instead of Harris Tweed. That's because I've done a recessed zip and I don't, get, I don't have very good results with the Harris Tweed um, recessed zipper. I think it's better to do one with the vinyl. So I've adjusted the pattern accordingly just for doing that, but it's, I've not changed the design. Um, with the strap, I'm not keen on thicker straps, wider straps. Nothing wrong with it, and I think it looks good with the bag, but I didn't want a wide strap. So I've done a narrower strap, but I've also done a, a pretty little strap, and I'll show you how to make this. Uh, so I hope you enjoy learning about that if you don't already know it. I've added a zip end to my zip, and as you can see, we've got the recessed uh, zipper uh, that I've shown how to do. And inside, I've also shown how to do a, pull the stuffing out there, how to do a zip pocket. I don't know if you can see because it's quite dark. Uh, I'm trying to shine the lamp. Anyway, it's a, it's a zip pocket and a slip pocket, but it's a zip pocket the way I do it with a zipper facing. Um, so just a few little tweaks, but... Um, the design itself, uh, I wouldn't play about with that. Um, I, would, I just wouldn't be as rude to do that. So um, it's as it is and it's a lovely design. <clears throat> so I hope you enjoy my tutorial. Uh, please check out all the links that I give in the description of the video for Diane's Facebook group, uh, website and YouTube and also my YouTube and uh, Facebook group. So uh, I shall get on with the tutorial, shut up talking, <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. To begin with, I'm going to deviate slightly from the pattern. And that's because when I make a bag, I like to get the handle or the strap done first. Because very often, um, it's the last thing you do for the bag. And when I finish a bag, I think, oh great, I finished it. And then I think, no, I haven't, I've got to do the strap. So I like to get the strap done so that when I do finish the bag, I have finished the bag. Um, and my excitement doesn't get dashed by it. So I, I do like to prepare the strap or the handle first. Now in this case, the strap gets made during the bag pattern. Um, because you need to add it before you finish the bag. Um, but I still like to get it done. Now, I'm, I'm doing a slightly different strap to the one that's in the pattern. The one that's in the pattern, if you imagine, that's how wide it is. Obviously, a lot longer. And it's a wide strap. Um, I think it's about one, one and a half inches once it's made. So we start with a six inch wide piece of fabric. And you would fold this into the middle. I always leave a bit of a gap. Because if you butt them right up against each other, when you fold them, you don't get a true neat line of... Because that's being pushed and they just don't meet properly. You can end up with a strap that's all skew -iffy, like that. So I always leave a, a little gap. And then when you fold, they behave nicely. And you can fold right up to the line so that they're equal and so on and then once you've done that you take it to your machine stitch down the um, open edge first 
and then up the side of the foliage. Now, um, if you want a padded bag, put some foam down the centre. Um, well, actually, you'd put it down on one side thinking about it, sorry. You'd put a piece of foam down along this edge, one edge, that's a little bit under one and a half inches. I would actually go for like one and a quarter to allow for the seam edges, and then you'd stitch it for that's a padded one. Um, or just as usual, you can use Peltex Decover, it depends on what type of strap the feel that you want of your strap um, as to what you put in it. Um, if you're using an adjustable strap with a slider, you'd tend to not put anything in it because it would become too bulky for the slider. So you'd literally just put the vinyl. So that's the method for the strap that the pattern has, which is perfectly good. But I just wanted to change it up a little bit. So I've got my strap, the length that's required to the pattern. But I've cut it just um, three inches wide instead of six. And then I've drawn lines from the edge, um, only three quarters of an inch. Um, in fact, I beg your pardon, I've got a feeling that it's a little, little less. I thought so, no, I did. I made it smaller, two and a half inches wide. Beg your pardon. So the strap's two and a half inches wide. Then I've drawn lines along the edge at three quarters of an inch in from the edge. And then I've cut a strip that's one inch wide and the length of the strap that's in part of the Harris Tweed that I'm using. And I like to use my double sided tape in this. And I just lay a strip along the centre. And I'm also going to lay a strip on each side, just on the outside edge of the line that we've drawn. to remove the centre backing, the centre strip, and I'm just going to lay, now you can do this with anything, whatever fabric you're using, um, even if it's just cotton, and you don't have to worry about the raw edges, you'll see why in a minute, but it's a little bit longer than it needs to be. Trim that off. So that's done. Now to remove one of the strips, and I'm just going to fold it in towards the edge of the uh, tweed that I've put down but not right up to it. Again, this is because we're going to fold it over and I don't want it fighting the tweed for room.
Okay. So that's that one. And now what I want to do is lay some more double-sided tape along this side. And this is sewable tape. Um, if you're getting a, a craft double-sided tape, that's no good. Like the type you use for scrapbooking, it gums up your needles. But I buy this, which is uh, from farbenmix.de, which is a German website. And it's their style fix, and it's brilliant. And um, it's sewable. I'm just peeling off the ends of the double-sided tape. You may not be able to see it because I think I'm probably off screen there. Apologies. Right, and now we fold this in and over. All the way along. And I'm going to now take this to my machine and stitch close to this edge. So there we have it attached on one side. And if you turn it over, you'll, you'll see you're quite far from the edge. Now if you want to sew along the edge as well, so that you've got a double row of stitching, by all means do, I may choose to do that. Um, now I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. So then I'll come back and show you the finished strap. And here's the finished strap. I've decided not to stitch um, on the edges. Um, but yeah, so that's the finished strap. Uh, my strap has ended up being, I think, just, just over an inch. Uh, yeah, and 1.1 inches. Um, and that's my choice. I like a narrower strap. Um, if you want to wire the strap, literally just make it however wide you want it. Um, so I started with a two and a half inch wide strap to get a one inch wide strap. So um, just obviously make it larger for whatever size you like. But that's how it's made. It's very simple but quite effective, I'm sure you'll agree. So now we'll start with the tutorial. Um, there are a couple of things, again, that I'm doing slightly different. Uh, one is for the zipper pocket, the inside zipper pocket. I've made a zipper facing. Um, I will show you how I do my inside pocket when we come to it. I'm also doing a recessed zip closure, um, which again is different. I spoke to Diane, she's more than happy for me to show you how to do this um, because um, she hasn't done it to her pattern, added it to her pattern, um, and she doesn't have any plans to, uh, so this way you get to learn how to do it. So that's for the recessed zipper. Um, I don't fuse my foam uh, because I've not had any great results when I fuse my foam. I've ended up with wrinkles. Um, what I would suggest is um, that don't fuse your foam until you've finished your bag, then fuse it. Uh, so that when you're turning your bag inside out, right side out, etc., um, the foam can cause wrinkles on your material um, and you won't be able to get them out. So if, if you fuse it afterwards, you'll be okay. Um, so, as I say, I don't fuse mine. I actually sew mine into the seam and then trim the excess from the seam allowance. Um, it's just something I prefer to do. I also actually use flex foam, which is um, not fusible by Pellon. Um, so I can't fuse that anyway. However, it's very thick. And in this case, I've chosen to use Bose or R form, which is double-sided fusible. Um, so it's, it's slightly thinner and I just feel that that's what I'd like to do. Um, again, uh, you can either stick to um, Diane's recommendations 
Um, and the reason why she recommends the things that she does is because she knows what she's talking about and they're her patterns. But thankfully, she does suggest either using Flex Foam um, by Pelon or Bosal in our form, which I'm using. So at least she, she, she suggests, suggests both of those. So I'm not deviating from uh, Diane's recommendations, thankfully. Um, so I'm going to baste them to the pattern pieces, which I've already fused into facing two. And I just base stitch down the sides a very long stitch so that they're easy to trim out of the seam when it comes to it. So, with that, having said that, um, I've got my exterior pocket piece and my lining piece, which is what we're going to be in with first. Now, I'm using Harris Tweed, so I've got my label that I want to attach before I create the pocket piece because uh, I don't want the stitching to show through to the lining so I've actually stuck it to a, a piece of vinyl that's a quarter of an inch bigger all the way round I'm just going to attach it by stitching around the edge to the vinyl and then I shall decide where to put my label and sew it to this part, the extern external, oh my goodness me, put my teeth in, my exterior piece. So I'm going to just go and attach this and come back when I've done it. Okay, so I've added the Harris Tweed label and I've also added a handmade label. Um, it looks a bit skewiffy, but I've measured and it's not, it's not an illusion. I just hope it will look right once it's on the bag, but it's, um, yeah, I keep looking at it thinking it looks off, but measured and everything's equal, so we shall see. Okay, so now we want to lay the lining fabric right side down and lay the exterior on top right side up so that the wrong side together this is for the front pocket and then we want to take it to our machine and stitch all the way around all the edges um about quarter of an inch seam allowance it needs to be within the three eighths of an inch seam allowance so it doesn't get seen later on so i've stitched all the way around you can see it better on this side and I should have said earlier on, but I have overlocked my tweed. It does start to fray quite rapidly. So if you have an overlocker, then do overlock the edges to, just to stop it fraying. If you don't, you could use a fray check like um, June Taylor's fray block or uh, Pim's fray check. Or just do a, a, a stitch around, a zigzag stitch around the edge on your machine or don't worry about it it's entirely up to you um, but I just like to overlock um, and now we want to do our top band on the pocket and I've already paired mine and I created I cut sorry a piece of um, vinyl I'm not going to mention the size because that's giving away the pattern but to the size that you're, so it suggested you that you do. So I've done that, and then I've folded the edges in towards the centre. But as you can see, not all the way in, so that when we fold, they'll fold evenly. And I've laid some double-sided tape either side, ready to fix onto here. Uh, and I apologies, I meant to mention, with my vinyl, I use the navy blue acrylic leather paint this is angelus angelus a n g e l u s i bought this from amazon um i buy different colors and i just go around the edge painting the edges so that they don't show up as white because otherwise you see the white background just along the edges so you can also use a sharpie pen for instance and then just to get rid of any fluffy edges from the vinyl, the backs of the vinyl, I just skim over with the lighter. Um, I should have said that, so I do apologise. 
Okay, so I'm going to peel off one backing and I'm just turning it upside down so that I can see what I'm doing. And I lay the pocket along the edge, not quite to the centre. Again, as I said, I don't want to um, have it causing problem with the fold. So now we fold over. You don't have to use double sided tape. I like to use it to keep hold of everything in place. And now I'm just going to take it to the machine and stitch along the edge. So there's the top band attached, both sides. And that's our pocket front prepared. And now what we do is we get one of our main panels. I've added the foam and just tacked it in. And we place this on top and we just line it up equally. So what I like to do is just measure both sides to make sure that they're at the same height and then I just adjust accordingly so I'm happy with that and then I just click around And on this side and then just attach in place a quarter of an inch seam allowance so I've attached it around and then I've done stitching down each side um, Diane actually called it profile stitching and you measure it an inch and a half in from the edge and to do a straight line down, which I've done. Then you've got a nice square pocket. Um, I quite like that. You don't have to do that. That's just more a decorative feature than uh, fun functional. Um, so that's that. And then um, I folded this in half and cut a notch out in the middle. And I've got my gusset, exterior gusset with the uh, foam in place and I folded that in half and cut notches out on both sides and now we place the notches so they're lined up and then take the top of the gusset and line it up with in fact, I'm using pins because this isn't vinyl, so I can use pins. Attach in place there. And there. I'm back to here to put another. I'm so used to using vinyl, I often forget to use pins when I'm not using vinyl. Let's go through all the layers. That's it. And then we just want to start pinning the gusset to the bag panel. And as we go, we may have to ease 
the gusset to fit. Um, and that is, oh, I keep stabbing myself with pins. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I do like to get stabbed by pins. Um, I'm going to use my trusted method. That's a stapler. And I do this all the time, especially when doing curves. And I don't get stabbed. And they're very easy to remove afterwards so and then I don't get stabbed with the pins and I always make sure the staples are well within the seam allowance so that I don't risk damaging my machine or breaking needles and losing them inside the machine if it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I, I tend not to use the staples. But as you can see, this is much nicer to use to attach. So that's that side done. And then across here. Oops. And this is a slightly different staple gun to the average stapler because you can get right close up to the edge. And I just got this from Amazon. Um, you don't need any special name, just a, a stapler will do and you'll find them on there eventually that's how easy that is and I'm now going to stitch a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around so I've stitched this in place and just to show you how easy it is to remove the staples even when you've added them into foam we just pinch it out like that very easy to do and then what I like to do now is trim the foam out of the seam allowance making sure I don't cut into the stitches the tack stitches that we've done because we've done tacking stitches that are on the I mean mine's a six millimeter um, stitch but whatever length your machine can do they come out nice and easily so you're not fighting stitches when removing the foam And then I shall carry on doing that in a minute to save boring you with having to watch it all. Um, and we do it both sides as well, trim the foam from both sides. And then once we've done that, we just want to cut into the curve. This will help when turning the bag in a little while so approximately every centimetre or three eighths of an inch and you only need to do it around the curve like so so I'm going to carry on removing the foam and trim uh, snip into this curve and then I shall come back for the next part so I've trimmed the foam away, cut notches 
and what I've also done was trim back on the um, wall side on the bulkier side because I've got the vinyl gusset I've left that at that normal length and I've just trimmed the, the um, thick layers of the wool back to a quarter of an inch so it tapers the seam this will help with giving a nice neater finish now I've used vinyl so I can't press my edges but if you haven't used vinyl then just give them a press around to sort of open up the seams to help with the look but because I've also just reduced some of the bulk in here that's helping with looking a bit neater a bit finer because it was very rounded so that's that side done and now I'm going to repeat exactly the same with the remaining piece and so I'll add it like this um, I'll do all that as I've just done and then um, we'll go from there so here's the bag exterior made and what I've done now is marked the center of the gusset and also the center of my strap if you haven't already made the strap now's the time to make it and then making sure that the side you want showing is face down I'm just sticking that with some double-sided tape make sure that the strap doesn't twist and then also attach it on this side so that when you turn your bag right side out it will go up like that so I'm going to stitch both at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance I've added the strap and what I had to do was well was to make sure that it, it didn't go skew -iffy, was I just added extra double sided tape if you've used a fabric just fabric you can put a pin in there just to make sure it doesn't shift I'm going to leave that in place until after I've um, added the lining and so on so that's the exterior made and next we're going on to the lining first thing we're going to do is to prepare the recess zipper this is not part of the pattern this is in addition to the pattern so if you don't want to add the recess zipper um, skip past this part um, if you do however this is what I'm doing um, I've cut two exterior pieces um, which are eight, eight inches long sorry and two inches wide and that is 20.5 centimeters long and five centimeters wide and I've done the same in the lining fabric and then I've cut a number five zip um, and that's 33 centimeters or 13 inches so the first thing I want to do is to just prepare my zip and I just mark down one inch from the end and then open the zip up and then just fold the zip at the bend at the sorry at the line and then bring the back up so that you've got like an L shape and I just pop a pin through there uh, without trying to stab myself And then I take it to the machine and I just stitch down there just to hold that in place. 
and then I do exactly the same with this side. So here's my zip prepared at the ends. Now, if you don't want to add your zip pull yet, don't. Add it at the end, it's not a problem. Um, if you have difficulty lining up the zip pull uh, evenly, then you may want to add it now so that you've got the ends that are even. Um, however, I'm happy to proceed with the zip completely apart makes it a lot easier to sew and I just add the zip pull right at the very end um, so what we need to do now is get one of our exterior pieces and I just want to mark half an inch from the end And then we get the zipper piece that has the teeth right side down with the part sticking up, the L part as such. And we're going to lay it along there, leaving that as a gap. So I like to just... Lay my double sided tape along the edge It's easier to do it looking at it And then peel that off and then Lay the zip along the edge, starting at the half inch line that we've marked. Go all the way along. And then I like to lay another line, double sided tape. If you're not using double sided tape, you can just go along to the machine and just stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance just base stitch it on to attach and then we get our lining piece and we have that right side down on top and then we take it to the machine and we stitch from the bottom here a quarter of an inch seam allowance up and then quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way along and then stop. I should mention, I forgot to mention, um, mark a line at this end as well at half an inch and when you sew, stop at that mark. So here it is stitched, stopping uh, at half an inch before the end and I'm just going to snip the edge off that zip and the corner, cut the corner to reduce the bulk and then turn it through like so and then the reason why we left this gap at the end was so that we could fold the seam in like that to then stitch so what I like to do again my trusty double sided tape I think if I was going to be marooned on a desert island and they said you can take your sewing machine etc and what are the five essential gadgets that you'd take? Double-sided tape would definitely be one of them. I 
I wonder what the other five things would be. I think my rotary cutter. Hmm, that's a difficult one. There's so many. I'm a gadget nut, but there's so many things I would like to take. I really don't know. So we do both sides and make sure that when you fold them over you're matching the edges of the seams up so that then we push through again make sure that we push that corner right out I, I to gently tease because I don't want to push put a hole through it um, and make sure that these are matching so I just again double sided tape Fold that down like that. So that's stuck in place. And now we go to the machine and we top stitch up the side there, along, down, and then I just tack this edge in place just to keep it closed. So that's the one side done. And now we have the other side to do. And Obviously your zip is going to close like this, so we need to think about the fact that we're going to basically do the opposite end, and that is to mark the half inch line, and lay our tape, not quite to the end. And then right side down again. Oops, <laughs> what about? That's the right side down. Along the edge there. More double sided tape. And then the lining right side down and then again we're going to be stitching up and along so we just want to mark the half inch mark to stop stitching on here so stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance up and along and stop. Okay, so I've stitched this piece and we trim the edge off the zip. Cut the corner again as before. And then we just want to lay the double sided tape here. and fold over again on this side fold over and make sure that you've got the edges lining up nicely and then push to the right side And then just get a bit more double sided tape
and then we're going to go to the machine again and top stitch up along down and base stitch along the edge and that's our recessed zipper prepared you can if you want to add your zip pull now um, which I like to do just to keep it in place but I may take it off when we come to sew it again so I just pop it on on each side make sure that they go on evenly and it's worth at this point taking your time to make sure that each edge lies, lines up evenly along the top of the zip pull and then there we go so next I'm going to show you how to add it to the lining now we're moving on to the lining uh, we want one lining panel piece and I've marked the centre of it um, and this is my um, version of doing the zip pocket um, there are different versions out there and of course you can follow Diane's version by all means um, there's nothing wrong with Diane's version at all it's just um, my preference on doing this so what we've, I've done is I've got a zipper facing piece now by the way with all my um, vinyl that I've used and on the front as well I've edged it with my acrylic paint I actually used the blue one for this one navy blue acrylic leather paint I get this from Amazon um, if you put in leather paint it will bring up all sorts of brands etc and colours um, so I just go along the edge here as you can see on the back um, and it just gives a nice finish and sometimes you can get a little bit fluffy so I just skim over it very quickly with a lighter and that gives it a tidy look um, and it gets rid of the whiteness don't have to do it but it's just, uh, just something I prefer to do um, and I put oh sorry I should give you the measurement shouldn't I uh, remind myself it's normally 8 inches long or 7 and a half, 8 inches long and one and a half actually one and three eighths of an inch deep because what I do is then I draw a line half an inch up half an inch down and then half an inch in from each end and I'm left with a box that's um, seven inches long and three eighths of an inch um, wide because I'll be using um, a number three zip on this you can use number five if you want to I've marked a centre line for the centre of it. Um, that I've marked is for my own label that I use. And it just lets me know where to place it. So if you use a label like this one, um, I just fold it in half. And I just skim over the edges because it helps stick the two layers together, which helps with holding in place. So I just place some double sided tape on one side oh, missing some that's odd oh, right peel the backing off and then I just where I've marked the two lines I just go over so that I get And that's how I just attach it temporarily until we sew across it. So double sided tape along the 
outer edges just the outer edges for now and I want to make sure I get this straight so I get my ruler and I want an inch down from the top Peel off the top tape and then making sure I put the line that I've marked in the right place and then I push it along the ruler and make sure that I get a nice edge. And then I remove the back of the bottom one and I take it to the machine and I stitch all the way around the outer edge. So I've stitched all the way around and now just cut a slit in the lining and chim around okay now we put some more double sided tape along the inner edges next to the box that we've cut out I get my zip, move the zip pull out of the way, pull the bottom strip off, there along there. Move the zip pull down. Like so. And then get more tape. And this time we pull the bottom strip off, get our pocket lining and we lay it right side down and put the bottom edge along underneath the zip. And then we take it to the machine and we just stitch along here making sure the pocket stays like that instantly i should have said and i do apologize for not having said leave threads long at the start and the end don't double stitch because it doesn't look brilliant and I, i'm sorry i didn't say sooner it, it, when it becomes second nature you just tend to forget that not everyone knows it if, if you're brand new to bag making then I can't expect you to know this and what we do is just pull on the thread that's at the back and it will bring the loop up for the thread that's underneath I just need to put something white there because I can never see with the dark and just catch the loop and pull the thread through, the same down this end, and 
there we go and then we pull this down just finger press uh, peel the tape up backing off at the top one and then fold the bottom up to the top Up a little bit higher and then take it to the machine stitch up the side along the top and down I pulled the threads through the back and tied them off and that's how it looks from the outside and if we pull this back just take it to the machine and stitch a half, half, quarter to half an inch both sides to close the sides of the zip uh, pocket. So I shall do that and we're going to move on to the other side of the lining in a moment. Now I'm going to add a slip pocket on the other side. You can leave this out if you want to, again not part of the pattern. Um, I've cut a piece of fabric that's 8 inches across and 11 inches deep. And I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance to the corner and along by a couple of inches, back stitch, leave a gap of a few inches and then do the back stitch there and carry on up to the top. So I've stitched around a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I've just trimmed the corners and then I've just pressed the seam over. It will just make it easier when we come to close the pocket. So we turn it right side out. If you like a padded slip pocket, you can by all means put um, some fusible fleece, um, or a bit of batting in there and fuse it to one side um, but I'm quite happy with the pocket um, of just two layers of fabric this fabric uh, doesn't need interfacing it's a lovely fabric it's um, a PU water, water repellent fabric um, that I get from Pound Fabrics in the UK. Um, it's really nice to use. And I get my little ironing pad and I just like to make sure that the seams are rolled out. They're not folded in on each other. Give it a little press. Again on the other side. And I'm just going to uh, top stitch along the top of the pocket, the folded side. Okay, so I've marked the halfway point on the pocket, just folded it in half and, and marked it. I've got the half sort of centre point of the pocket lining piece. And I'm going to measure one and a half inches down from the top edge. I just like to have the slip pocket slightly lower. This allows for you to put other things like slight, that are slightly higher in your pocket. Like if you wanted to put your mobile phone standing up. So, I pin it in place, so I want to make sure that it doesn't look quite centre to me, so I 
that's an inch and a quarter. That's better. It's definitely slightly off. Which I couldn't see until I turned it. to stitch from the top all the way round make sure I close the gap as I go to the top there so there's the slip pocket added if you want to you can do a line down the center to make two smaller pockets or do a narrower one there to just do a pen pocket entirely up to you I'm going to leave it as this now if you weren't going to add a recess zipper this is where you would now get your top bands and add them to the lining panels um, but we're going to so uh, the first thing we need to do the gusset itself which is this is going to end up two inches wide once the seam has been stitched you'll be left with a two inch wide gusset this is obviously much wider than two inches now the reason why I did the measurements like I did earlier on, it depends on the zip you're using and your margin, your seams as such, you may do slightly larger seams etc. So it's better to have too much and trim it down. So you are going to have to trim it, I'm, I'm sure that it's going to be too wide, whatever you're left with um, it is going to be too wide. So basically um, you want a two and three quarter inch wide piece of uh, zipper recess zipper um, so if you think about um, it's one and three eighths of an inch each side um, uh, it's going to be you measure If you think about measuring one and three eighths of an inch from the center of the zip on each side I know that I'm going to have three quarters of an inch to trim off because I've got an inch and a half more than I need so I cut along like that same on this side so this should now measure two and three quarters inch wide Oops, that side so uh, which it does so from you you want from your raw edge and the centre of the zip is going to be one and three eighths of an inch as I said and then the same that side <clears throat> it's really important to make sure you've got those measurements for it to fit nicely at the end and now what we need to do we get our zip uh, pocket piece and if you think about it, you want this to be at the back of your bag. And the back of your bag would go against your body. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you undo your zip, you want to undo it from the front to the back. Like so. So if you want your zip pocket to be next to your body, <clears throat> excuse me, on your right hand side, then you place the zip with the zipper pull at the opposite end of this zip pull. But if you wear it on your left, you're going to want to have it the other way around so that the zip pulls match. Do you see what I mean? So it's entirely up to you where you place it. And 
now I'm just going to place some double sided tape along the edge of the recess zipper <clears throat> excuse me and I've marked oh, of course I've cut it off <laughs> okay let's mark again we need to mark the halfway point so that we can see and I'm turning it upside down so that I can see what I'm doing and we've got the halfway point there just so that we know we're lining it up exactly halfway <coughs> excuse me at least we would be sorry it's half past four in the morning and I'm on another planet okay what we need to have is let's do the markings first of all what we need to have is um, the lining side up against the lining side so that's how we're doing it so that the lining is the lining so I, I'm sorry it's, it's not thinking properly <laughs> but we still want the zips at the opposite end zip pulls if you're having the bag on the right okay now turn it around so I can see that's better goodness me see we all mess up at least I haven't sewn it and then we lay another row of double sided tape the whole length this time and we get one of our zipper band pieces and we want it so that the widest end is um, going to be laid down So that you've got the narrower part going here, the shorter end on this side. Now we'll take this machine and stitch at three quarters, sorry, at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I've sewn across and then I've also top stitched on the lining side with the seam going down. And then we get our remaining lining piece and we do exactly the same by adding double sided tape And then another row on the top edge. And then we get the remaining top band with the longest edge going down along the top. And take it to the machine and top stitch three eighths of an inch and then also top stitch on the lining side and there we have it and that's the lining side you should find that this measures two inches across if I get my two inch ruler fits perfectly so you know it's going to be happy with the gusset now um, a little matter regarding the gusset because I've done the recess zip um, I've used vinyl instead of the lining fabric um, this means that if we add the gusset as it is it's going to 
have you think look at it vinyl 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 lining that's perfectly fine and by all means do that if you want to but I want it to be all uniform with vinyl so what we need to do is cut out if you're doing the same cut out some vinyl and they are two and three quarters wide and two and three quarters long so it's two and three quarter inch square and what we're going to be doing is basically adding it to the top of the gusset with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance so what I want to do is cut two and three eighths of an inch off so that you're keeping the three eighths of an inch for seam allowance so and this will be the same for you it will be two and three eighths of an inch now because it doesn't matter which end I cut I can actually cut both together if I want to but I'm actually just going to keep it so that I know I'm not doing anything wrong I don't get any measurements wrong and just do each end which I know you're sort of probably thinking well that's silly you could have just done four and three quarters of an inch at one end yes I could have but I don't like to tempt any errors so we've cut those off they're not quite as big but that's because we're allowing for the seam allowance so now what we need to do is take this to the machine right sides together stitch across at three eighths of an inch seam allowance on each end so here's my gusset prepared and just check if you've done this check that it does now measure 73 centimeters long 28 and a quarter inches long um, it's very important that that's what it measures now we get our bag and either pull the zip all the way down towards the end if you're worried about a zip pull coming off just put a clip because we're going to add the gusset to one side of the bag however as I said earlier I'm going to remove the zip pull altogether so I can work on one piece at a time like you do if you haven't added the zipper facing uh, the zipper recess zipper okay so what we want to do now is line up the gusset and we want it to make sure it matches the seam on each side because it, it is very noticeable if it doesn't so I just click there and there Oh, beg your pardon. The one thing we've got to do is measure for the halfway. That's very important. So, So that's halfway on the gusset and then just fold the bag panel in half it's easier than measuring make sure the edges meet up give it a good pinch and then mark the line So I'm just off camera there. Good pinch, mark the line. 
so that's the pieces marked now I'm going to use my staple gun again this fabric that I've used for the lining is lovely but it loves to move a lot so you have to pin the heck out of it or staple it whichever you prefer it doesn't rip the fabric so it's fine to staple And then I just want to line up the marking for the halfway. And then again, we want to make sure we keep the zip out of the way. So just fold it down and pin it out of the way. And then, again, lining up the seam. And then, we just want to go round and pin, clip, staple, whatever you like to do. Okay, it may look like we've got a lot of staples, but that's because we're easing the panel around the gusset, or the gusset around the panel. So you either pin, clip, or staple well. So what we need to do now is take it to the machine and stitch at one centimeter seam allowance so we've attached all the way around and as you can see this lined up nicely and then we add this one in exactly the same way only we're going to leave a gap in the lining so i'll put that zip out of the way in a minute we'll do that and when we stitch, we'll stitch about two centimetres below the seam and then leave a gap along the straight edge and then just carry on curving. Alternatively, if you'd rather leave a gap in the bottom, you can leave a slightly larger gap. So it's entirely up to you whether you leave it at the side or the bottom. So here's the lining made. Um, I've left a gap at the bottom. Um, as I said, you might want to leave it at the side. Um, it's going to be a slightly smaller gap at the bottom than it would be the side, but I'm confident it will turn fine anyway. Um, um, what I should have said was you can actually make the seam half an inch around if you want a snugger fit for your lining. Um, so apologies, I will try to make sure I put that up on the um, screen at the time. Um, but I've done three eighths of an inch, so um, that's fine. And now we want to turn the lining so that it's right side out. And the exterior wrong side out. And then looking for the back which is here I want to put the zip pocket against the back and then line up the seams So 
So we line up the seams first, open up the seams on the outer as well. And if you do do uh, a half an inch seam allowance on the lining, make sure you start at three eighths of an inch and move out to half an inch. Otherwise you'll find that the lining won't fit. So it needs to be three eighths of an inch at the start. So that's all fit, fitting nicely. And I'm going to stitch at three eighths of a seam allowance all the way around the top. Okay, so I sewed around the top at three eighths of an inch seam allowance and then I trimmed the foam out and I also trimmed out the uh, tweed wool um, or whatever fabric we use. I just trim one side out um, and leave the other side. So it's like a tapering um, really, rather than a dead stop and a ledge, it, I taper. It goes back to my dressmaking days really. Um, and you you know you layer the, the seams so that's that done and now we just need to turn it right side out and um, I shall do that have a fight with it and come back and uh, we'll carry on from there so I've turned it right side out and just got a loose thread there and then I've stitched the opening together and so we pop that down inside and also pop the recessed zipper down inside as well like so and then the final jobs to do are to top stitch around the top and to add the zip back which I won't do yet because it's handy to keep everything open and tuck the zips away so I'm going to top stitch around the top pop the zip on and return with the completed bag okay so I top stitched around the top and then I added a zip end to the zip and that's the bag made I hope you enjoyed the tutorial please click subscribe so that you don't miss future tutorials of mine and also do the same on uh, Diane's website uh, YouTube site um, Spencer Og and um, I'll put the links to everything that you need in the description of the video and um, I shall be back soon with another tutorial happy stitching